Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. This is going to be behind the scenes Expedition Mutators, a dev blog that is featured on newworld.com. If you don't want to have my thoughts or just the audio reading of this post in your ear, note I'll have a link to this post in the description of the video so you can go check it out for yourself. And I wish you all the very best. Thanks for being here by the way. But for those of you who are sticking around with me, we've got a lot to talk about. I've highlighted some key aspects that stand out to me in this post itself. So I'm going to read it like I normally do with these posts, but also kind of make some comments here and there as we delve through it. As we wait for the next major release for New World coming in the next couple of weeks, let's spend some time with this dev vlog and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. But without further ado, I think it's time that we dive into it. Greetings adventurers, mutators push players to experiment with different builds, but these augmented expeditions challenged the New World development team well before the community received their first mutated expedition tuning orb. Like many gameplay mechanics, mutators were created through the combination of fan feedback, internal tests, and a desire to create something difficult yet fun. We recently had a chance to chat with a New World developer designer Darren McKinsley and world experience lead Michael Willett in anticipation of the upcoming mutators for more insight into that desire. Explore their inspiration, philosophy, and ambition behind mutators in this interview below. So, the idea for mutators was born from a mix of eternal brainstorms and a passion for another genre, roguelike games. Michael said that the design team wanted to challenge the community in ways through tougher expeditions, similar to how roguelikes often feature powerful enemies that can easily overcome un underprepared players. These challenges in New World ultimately took on the form of mutators. Darren walked us through the creation of Explosive, one of the world's first mutators, to help us understand the team's design process. This mutator pits players against mob enemies that explode on death. We like playing around with these explosives almost immediately since it created an incentive for our eternal teams to communicate, letting other players know that there was about to be an explosion. Darren said, this turn just tight enough that knowing when an enemy will die is way more effective than dodging after the effect is in motion. The team also called the design choice effective because players are forced to face familiar enemies with different techniques. And speaking of myself, having done a few of the mutators on the PTR, I absolutely love how this currently changes the game and the flow and how it all processes this. But my personal hope though with it, and this and this post doesn't get into it, is that we'll see mutators brought into the lower level expeditions. I think that would help bring those back up in terms of rotation because I find that the expeditions in this game all feel really well designed. I really actually do enjoy running them with friends and I'm really looking forward to the future with some of the changes they actually have coming to this game across the summer and this fall. Anyway, let's continue on. That fresh, though familiar design process rapidly evolved throughout the development team as a result of internal tests. Each test introduced valuable results for the team to further refine mutators. Fans might be surprised to learn just how much went into the development. Multiple departments like visual effects, user interface, character design, combat design, and expedition design all played major roles in helping early mutators fulfill the team's core philosophy. So speaking of that philosophy and the guiding principle behind mutators, according to Darren, is to encourage varied get counterplay, incentivize teamwork, and foster communication. But speaking for me, one of the things I see within difficult content and games, it does two things. It brings people together and it tears them apart. I'll hear people talk about very dramatic uh, moments within games. And generally speaking, more often than not, those are usually in relation to higher difficulty style content as opposed to just kind of normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill stuff. But that's just my observation. You can feel free to obviously share your experiences if you've run into these very dramatic moments. But the thing that does bring people together is it forces you to kind of learn how the game plays. This is something I really appreciated about Elden Ring. Is for Elden Ring and me, it teaches me to really dive in and learn the systems and make choices right away, as opposed to like, I guess, more of a modern game, which ends up just kind of saying like, oh, you're here, here's your win, if you want a challenge, you can seek it out later. And I really appreciate that actually about both New World and Elden Ring, even though those are both two different games and two different style genres, even though they are some, there are some similarities that I do connect there. Anyway, to continue on, alone, these goals might create fun new moments, but together a vastly improved replayability. Each week, players can join a different set of expeditions with randomly selected mutators for diverse challenges and gameplay patterns. 
This variety stems from feedback. The developers notice players enjoy strategy over pure difficulty, tuning, and continue to design mutators around what players can do to outplay every effect. Censored, Darren's favorite mutator, exemplifies their philosophy. To succeed, players must coordinate ability usage and positions to avoid dangerous zones. Just one miscommunication can make for it far more difficult, even for the most experienced adventurers. Memorable and memorable mutators like Censored not only feature unique scenarios that promote different team dynamics, but they also strike a careful balance between difficult yet compelling challenges. So finding the right level of challenge. Simply spawning powerful enemies isn't going to create a fulfilling challenge. Instead, the team strives to push players to new ways to make expeditions feel fresh. The community's enthusiasm inspires Darren and Michael to make on-the-fly tuning based off of players' responses. Then they review feedback from each new release to help further iterate mutators through new effects. So how do they know that this challenge is just right? Mutator difficulty is like a ladder. Each step up adds extra effects. If the player feels a great sense of accomplishment, that is a win regardless of their step. The designers are always looking at new ways to build these moments up. More importantly, they want players to be able to freely experiment with their favorite roles and find fun, successful tactics for their team. Thanks for the continuing the Braves of our depths of our weekly mutator rotation. You can look forward to our upcoming batch of challenges. So they're adding overgrowth. This focuses on nature damage and resistance. Overgrowth adds effects like toxic and uh, pool, which tracks down players, and compost, which turns trash into healing areas for their allies. Barbaric focuses on physical damage. It adds berserk and enrage effect, and shattering, which deals stamina damage, and then fiendish. Curses that focus on the nocturnal, fiendish adds wary, which can, will be weakening players with rend and make them vulnerable to slow, and it also features blood offering, which stacks damage over time. The design team has some exciting stuff in the pipeline, including player requests. While Darren and Michael have nothing yet to reveal yet, they're thrilled for what the future has in store for mutators. And so guys, that brings us to the end of the dev post. Hopefully you found this useful, enjoyable, relaxing at the end of the day. Hopefully this was something good that showed up on your YouTube page. If you're new to this channel and you haven't hit subscribe yet, if you feel like there's anything I can do to earn that, just let me know in the comments and I'll work my best to make sure that you have a good YouTube experience over here on this channel. Thank you guys so much for being here, especially if you've already subscribed to you Legends. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free titles at the start or at the end of these videos. I said at the start, it's at the end. The video's over. What are you still doing here? All right, guys, thanks for listening. Hopefully you have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. But until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Ooh.